Hi, I'm Vu, and this is how we do the Vu Lee type raft in D3 Splint. This is a great option uh, for those using Rayware Desktop in particular. So we're going to walk through that workflow. For context, I have went ahead and already designed this night guard in D3 Splint. I have done the contacts, the boundaries, remesh, resmooth, and everything. So we've worked through this workflow all the way to the point where we're just about ready to normally finalize it. But before we finalize it, they have this little part here uh, up for adding rafts. Now, by default, I believe ribbon is the default type. I don't use the ribbon personally. Uh, if we do add a raft, we're going to use the Vu Lee style. So what we do is first is do a single left click right in the middle front of the night guard. That's the occlusal buckle or occlusal facial line angle right in the midline there is where you want to click once to place that 3D cursor. That's going to be where the raft will be centered or the attachment points for the raft will be centered. So let's go ahead and click on add Uli raft. You'll see here some settings from probably the last time you used it. Uh, 40 wide is fine. 16 wide is fine. If you want to go a little wider you can do tw 20. Uh, you really don't, I really find the length greater than 20, it really doesn't do any difference. Um, a little, the more you do, the more surface area you'll have. So the better attachment you have. If you have, if you find that this thing is debonding from the platform, increase these two numbers, uh, to increase your first layer surface area. The bed offset, leave that at four. That worked really well for me. Um, the only time you'd want to lengthen that it'll make your print taller and it will make it print a little slower. Uh, you don't want to get any much closer than four because then the supports will be too short. Uh, the supports are important, one, to uh, provide a base for the model to print from, but two, it actually provides a shock absorber or buffer. So when that model is going, uh, so when that model is printing, just imagine it printing, you know, upside down like this, you know, it's going to lift up and down. Uh, Every time it lifts up and down, there's cantilever stress right here when we print at that 45 degree angle. And so uh, you need a certain length of support where it's long enough to provide some cushion, but not so long that it actually makes it unstable. So four millimeters is the happy medium there, I think. So we're going to go ahead and go back to that menu. So four millimeters works for me. Contact size of 0.6, that's the radius of how big the attachment point is. If you find uh, at 0 0.6 it comes off like velcro and it's very easy to smooth out. If you do a number that is larger than that the support stubs will be will be bigger and beefier and that will give you a more reliable print if you're getting failures. If you do it smaller it will peel off perhaps easier but you're gonna fail rate's gonna start going up dramatically if you shrink below 0 0.6 contact size. Just just word to the wise there. Obviously, D3 Splint lets you parameterize everything to a pathological extent. It's great for control freaks like me. I know a lot of people just want to keep it simple. I think most of the defaults are fine as you see them here. The support angle limit of 45 is fine. That, that keeps your supports from getting too uh, big. The max support length of 12 I think is also good too. You don't want those to get too long. Uh, it wastes resin and uh, the supports don't provide any meaningful uh, help once they get too long and too angled. Uh, you'll understand what I mean when it's generated. So thickness of 2, that works for me. The cylinder of 2.5 has worked. Cylinder spacing of 4.25 works. These are actually lifted off the original VUBASE 4, I think. We, we came up with those numbers from that. Uh, level, print wrapped angle. And by we, you know, the D3 split, Splint team, they coded this. They were nice enough to name the feature after me. Uh, but it is their coding and it's their baby. And I I am, you know, very, very happy kind of in a godfather slash uncle sort of way uh, to use it. Uh, it's been great. And I've been super happy that they've been listening to my input and uh, refining it over a couple builds. So here we are. You can see it's generated, but you can also see it's a different color in the night guard. So that means it is not the same model. If we were to hit export right now, uh, it wouldn't work right. So we're going to go ahead and hit. First thing we're going to do now is keep going on the D3 splint top to bottom workflow. We're going to now 
join the, we've just hit add the print raft. Now we're going to join the print raft here. And what that's going to do is do a Boolean combine operation and combine these two. You see now they're the same color uh, because they're now the same object. Now we're going to, we can finalize at this point uh, if we're ready to go. And so we're going to click finalize. Finalize will erase the refractory model from inside the night guard. And that will give you a intaglio surface. There it is. And now we're ready for something that the patient can wear and we can print. So we're going to go ahead and hit export splint STL. I've already done this, so I'm going to cancel, but uh, you can go ahead and do that. Now what we're going to do is scroll down and put the patient's name in. And before I do that, I'm going to orient the model uh, the way I want it to put the name on. And that means uh, occlusal side down. I'm going to go on this side. It's a little wider. Okay, and now I'm going to, oh, I lost. This happens a lot with D3 Splint. If you get lost like this, click on the dental tab on the left. Now I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and we type his name here. I've already typed it. We're gonna click stencil text label and then click once and that's gonna create his name uh, in a little cursor thing. If you used Blue Sky Plan at any point, you've recognized this kind of motif. So basically you take the mouse and you can link by lengthening it, you enlarge the name or shrink it. There's another way to do that. And that's use your mouse pointer, your, your mouse wheel to enlarge or shrink the model. That will also make the text larger, smaller as well. Uh, we're using the middle button to move the model in relation to the text, the way we want it. Once we're in a good spot, we can then hit enter and it will draft it for us. If we like what we see, uh, we can go ahead and hit the emboss all labels and that will combine the STL, the embossed STL here with the rest of our night card and raft complex. And we'll have a three part harmony here. All combined as one STL. Okay. Once that finishes uh, doing its job, this is a lot of, there's a lot of computations happening here. I have a I nine machine and it's still kind of, this is one you just have to be patient. Uh, don't pound on the keys or anything. You'll precipitate a computer crash. Just have faith in the process. It's going to work. And it's done. Okay, so we're going to scroll up to the left. And we're going to go ahead and hit Export Splint STL here at the end. And you'll see here that I've already exported it. I've also added the name .embossed.rafted so I know what it is. That's great. Um, and so now we're ready to put that into Rayware Desktop. So I'm going to go here to Rayware Desktop and uh, put this in. Okay, so here's Rayware Desktop. We can go ahead and hit the plus button here and find the file. Or if you have the folder open, you can drag and drop it in, which is uh, easier for me sometimes. And we'll wait for the file to import. Uh, when we import it, uh, it will detect some mesh integrity issues sometimes. That means that a mesh integrity issue means that there's some minor flaw in the STL file. Uh, some of the APIS, some of the vertexes don't line up and there's little microscopic holes in the splint somewhere. So we're going to hit the fix button and Rayware Splint is going to fix it. You'll notice that right now it's roughly at the good print angle, but uh, when we hit the fix, it will reset it to the native angle of the STL model. That's just how Rayware desktop works. And now it says um, that we need support structure. We're not going to make supports here. That's going to be nasty. Uh, what we're going to do is use the base feature. So we're going to right click it, or we're going to left click it first. And then we're going to click left click the base button. And then we're going to find the base, click it. And then the model is set. Now, you'll notice that in my Pro 55, it sticks out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the rotate feature here to rotate it within the bounds of the printer. And then we're all set to print. One last check I always make is I click on the model and I look at the bottom and make sure that the bottom is all one color. Um, if the model is, let's, I'm going to intentionally tilt it one degree. Um, you'll notice here when I tilt it one degree, it's all one color except this tiny little part, and that's the kiss of death right here because that means that this little dark blue point is the only point that will print on the first layer, and then you'll have a rapid um, 
change in the model height and that will cause a failure. So uh, we don't want to do that. We want to hit base, um, click on the base of the model, and then you'll see here the whole thing is now one color. That's what we want to see when we 3D print a model. This seems like it's ready to go. We can go ahead and click the green print button here. Uh, my printer needs a reboot, long story short. Um, yeah, so my Wi-Fi is kind of weird, and so we'll reboot the printer. And poof, we have rebooted it, and now my Pro 55 is now on the menu after being rebooted. You know, it's the open secret of all tech nerds is if something doesn't work, reboot it. And you'd be surprised how often that fixes your problems. I wish life was always that simple. It is with technology often. So I went ahead and rebooted the machine. It's back on my Wi-Fi network. Uh, we can at this point, I typically do not hit the print button. I always hit the Q print button. That allows me to walk over to my printer, check everything, and then hit the print button on the screen. And that's how we do it there. Um, let's say just for giggles, you wanted to print this on the Rayware Cloud. So let's try that out. So let's say you wanted to print this instead on Rayware Cloud. You would take that same file. Let's go ahead and start here. What I'm going to say is to pick other print or dental model. Um, I'm not going to say to print a Clusal Guard because that will make the, the Cloud Slicer do try to add supports and we don't want those in this case because we generated our own supports in D3 Splint. So I'm going to hit other print. Yes, click on the little baby Yoda, very cute touch. No supports, orientation zero. Pro 55S, pick the resin. You can label the model if you want. Uh, and then hit browse, pick your model. In this case, uh, I'm dragging and dropping because for me that is a little quicker to find. Uh, one little peeve of mine, at least on my browser, is that I have to just scroll a little bit up to see the progress bar. But, you know, first world problems. Okay, the night guard is loaded. We're gonna hit next. Rayware Cloud is going to go ahead and try to digest this. You notice right now it has a Pro 95 base plate rendered. It's going to change that to a Pro 55 when they specify here. Just be patient, give it a second, and it will get everything together. And you'll see here it's trying to make sense of the model and um, put it on the print bed, and it's not going to have an easy time with it. It's probably going to give you an unsatisfactory result. Again, I like to say use common sense, but sometimes if you're new to printing, uh, you don't have the quote unquote common sense. I actually don't like that phrase for that reason is because really a better way to say it is to use your judgment and experience on this. And if you don't have it, uh, the experience yet anyway, um, basically we need to have a flat, broad base to support the supports to adhere it to the build platform and then the supports in turn will hang the night guard model whatever surgical guide off of it and so you'll see here after a really protracted processing time this is why a lot of people currently aren't using rayware cloud a lot of the power users it it will put the model in you'll see it's red the rings that it beyond the print the uh, print area of the base and so what we're going to need to do is fix that so we're going to click once on the model we're going to click the select base button and then we're going to use our left button. We're going to find the base of the raft, click it, and that will automatically orient it correctly. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, hit confirm changes. And now I'm going to go ahead. It's still beyond the, oh, bother. It's still showing red because it's beyond the base of it. So we're going to click once on it. Oh, look at that. It uh, fixed it. So. So with a couple of clicks, it went ahead and I just clicked and it just fixed itself. Uh, but if it weren't doing that, then I would just use this little wheel here and try to rotate it on the Z axis to fix it. I'm going to hit cancel. I don't want to actually do that. Um, would you hear it's red? I click on it once and it changes to brown. I think we're okay, but I'm going to move it all the way to the side of the bed. Hit confirm. Okay. So now it's all the way at the side of the print area. Um, it's showing red for some reason. Oh, because it's beyond this wall. I violated this wall, so I'm going to just nudge it a bit. 
confirm changes. The red wall tells you which boundary line you're out of bounds on, usually. Here it's showing me red still. Red's not a good color, I don't think. But here it's okay. So at this point, I think we're ready to, uh, I'm curious as to why when I unclick it, it's red, but maybe that just could be this, maybe that could be, it's not an error, but it's a slicer thing. Let's do something. Let's rotate it a little bit this way. So we know it's not in the, that should keep it in bounds. Let's try that. Um, no, it's still red. So I'm not sure why that is, but we can go ahead and send it to job queue. Uh, granted, this is a larger than normal night guard. Uh, one of the things you can do to minimize this problem is not generate as much of a length on your Vuli raft. Uh, the width and the length, you shrink that down, you'll get it to fit in your print area easier. Uh, well, we've shown you how to generate this in D3 Splint. We've shown you how to emboss and then lay it down in Rayware using the fixed file integrity and then select base. And we also showed you how to uh, you select that same select base function in Rayware Cloud. You can send it to the job queue at this point. Either way, whether you use the cloud or the desktop, um, you know, use what works for you. Keep in mind that both the desktop slicer and the Rayware Cloud especially are innovating, improving, iterating, upgrading, updating, whatever verb you want to use. It is rapidly changing and getting better. Sprint Ray really is like the Tesla of the 3D printing world. They're always updating, fixing, and breaking things. It's kind of a crazy circus sometimes, but I think on balance it ends up being better, and it's a great system to work with. I'm, you know, I'm very proud to be uh, in the position I am with them as a KOL, and I'm happy to be teaching their system. It's a, it's worked really well for us in our office. Thank you for watching.